Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting from to episodes 8 and 9 of Descending Stories. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 8 in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, my taste was fine. I don't know why, I thought it was going to taste different. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he is on tour. Uh Of course, I mean, damn, he's come so freaking far from, like, episode one to episode eight. Like, well, we can't even say that, but, like, you know, of this arc, really. Some more of episode three. Yeah, but see, at the same time, what about Shido? I mean, because, yeah, he's back at home, but I wonder how he's doing. I mean, because, like, no one's saying he's just drinking, number one. <laughs> and then, you know... Kiku's girlfriend, technically. How is she doing? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that eh, happens on the letter.
Bryce. Mm -mm. And see, this is when he's just gonna sweep right in and just, mm. Well, I mean, yes, because you have talent, but you already went. It's someone else's turn to get the shine. You know, you could just let him down easy and say no and then just go home if you don't really want to do it. I'm gonna let that, you know, slide real quick. Right? You think he would at least write one of you or both of you a letter or something? Postcard? I mean, I get it. He is busy and he it's just work, work, work. But, I mean, the nice thing that he could do is at least send her something. He cares about her. True. I agree with you, babe.
We know the signs and everything. Uh oh. Saw that from a mile away. Oh. Oh. She wants to be with you. Honestly, you deserve that slap. Hey, damn, don't you even care about her? Then why don't you just tell her? Like, how can I have a drink at a time like this if my love life sucks? Well, damn. I mean, but... She can just get out of the prostitution and eventually find a really good job or something. At least she'll be happy with you because she loves you. You really mean that? <sighs> I get it. I get the loner thing. Hell, I'm <laughs> I am a homebody, I'm very much to myself. But you need people in your life. You need to find the one. Even though I feel like right now, there really is no one out there for me. Me too. And the old elders really take your ass seriously. I mean, because you know, if you are a filmer, so. Well, you loved it immediately. <laughs> Keep going, not so much. It's, he's slowly moving into it.
Mm. You want money? Oh my. How is it that we both were correct about that? Oh my god. I mean, because it's obvious. Oh my god. It's a parting gift. No. I mean, yes, you will die, but I don't think you'll die to anyone's. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, that watermelon look good, even though I'm not a watermelon type girl. It's so funny, like the things, you know, something like watermelon. Because I used to eat that a lot when I was a kid. Apparently, I was a baby. But the things that you like as a baby, you don't really like it. I'm sorry, when you're older. I don't know. Maybe it was like the texture or just something for me. Or maybe I got one that was not in season. Your girl will never know. Always a pressure.
may ha not have planted it now, but he'll respect having it later on in life. Now, this, this really truly hurt because it, even though going back into episode one, um, we knew that regardless, our, our you know, Kiku, he was not with anyone. And, you know, you secretly wanted him to be with someone, but we know that because of the fact is he is older and he is living the same way that his current sensei is living, but he has a wife and such, his previous, his current um, master and such, that, yeah, kind of would work the same way with him that he would eventually find love, but the love that he was in love with because of the fact is this match is like oh she's she's sweet but she's not quote unquote wifey material like she is not a real a woman that i would consider to be wife material and you know as a woman myself it's like d does anything we do really have to make us wife material it, it's more about how you feel once again with that person and such i'm not like okay i'm not saying this to any guys to like say hey immediately wipe up the first freaking girl you fall head over heels in love with and girls don't do the same thing seriously because that is a downfall seriously a fucking downfall you you have to be cautious about anyone truly because you don't really know um, how your sensitive, your significant other is. Now, the fact is that she, she's kind of now going between the both of them. And I even thought that in, la with the last time that I watched the show, I was like, yeah, since they're kind of now over her and Kiku, she's gonna go from Kiku to, you know, what's his face? And once they had that talk and stuff and she was like well my 30 minutes are up i'm gonna go and he like grabs her and pulls her and embraces her and i'm like this is happening even though i don't want this to happen and such but it, it's it's complicated love is a very complicated thing i mean even in the 29 years i can say almost 30 years of my life because i'll be 30 in a couple of months um, I, once again, only have been in love, in my opinion, once. Um, and I felt like the, every other guy who I've currently dated, I'm just like, as Kiku, I'm just, right now, I'm like, I'm okay with being by myself. I don't need to be in a relationship with a guy and such, because sometimes it's like, and I can, I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for like a lot of people who kind of feel like this world, it's sometimes a burden to be in a relationship because as I've seen from friends who are in relationships versus friends who are not and such, when they're trying to be in a relationship with someone, they're dealing with not only their stress, but at the same time, Oh shit, excuse me. You're, as I said, you're not only dealing with your stress, you're also dealing with the stress of someone else. So if someone is going through something and you're going through something as well, that's double the stress that you're dealing with, yours and somebody else's. And the biggest thing about a relationship besides communication is trying to pick each other back up. It's not just like, oh, we can do this and this could just uh, put it in a nice neat little bow and we're fine. It takes a lot of work and such. And... It's crazy to look at relationships in a nutshell, whether you've been in a relationship or you've been together with your significant other others since like, psh, I could say high school, college, whatever, um, and such, because you have people, I even said it too, that sometimes like, oh, high school romances, especially if they go into marriages, will not last and such or anything else because you you want to be happy for someone but if when you know if you are not happy in the relationship with that other person definitely do tell them and i hate the fact that kiku was kind of like stringing her along and i'm like dude you just you need to end this like really you're not you're screwing yourself and her over even though yes you're claiming that you love her and you want to be with her maybe at the same time you should approve your master wrong and being like no you're wrong about her she's more than x y and z 
and then maybe been with her a little while longer and then test the waters of maybe a potential marriage with her and such. But at the same time, I feel like her as a character, she should be more than the, she kind of reminds me of the traditional type of woman who just wants to be in a relationship and wants to be taken care of by her husband because now typically the modern day woman is more like I can take care of myself and that is either if I'm in a relationship with a man or I'm just by myself where we're in the eras of independent women bad bitches we just don't want to like we we want to take care of of ourselves and guys are like that too but um because I have a mom who will tell me so many things my mom is the type of woman who will be like you need to have your own and such don't ha don't start getting your own when you're with him have your own when you get with him because if he fucks up you can leave and such or especially like from what I like <laughs> I can't believe we talk about this too um so my mom always says to me that my future boyfriend he can stay the night he can't live with me um if we end up living together, and like I said, if he fucks up and everything's in my name, I can kick him out. Or if it's in both of our names, I can leave and he has to deal with the consequences. Maybe they might call me for something or whatever, but it's better to always still have your own so that if something does happen, you can get through that little struggle moment that you're in. So always still be independent when you are in a relationship with somebody else because of the fact is you once again you never fucking know what the hell can happen so this is just a tragic mor uh, morning for these two because damn i really thought they would have been together even though from episode one you could tell he's not really with anyone but Still, it sucks. I would have liked it for him to be at least with someone. But go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode 9. Alrighty, episode 9 in 3, 2, 1, go. Excuse me. Yeah, how are you going to last without him? Of course, duh. Stand up straight. You know, I mean, seriously, if he was still alive and such, and if he was around and everything, and listening if he had like a <laughs> someone under his wing you know of course the younger version would say the exact same things that he's saying now <laughs> right It's not about caving in. Oh my god.
will say eventually using the president's skill and performing that is a little reckless like because if he fucked up like oh big ol' Let's say, and thank God he didn't. But still, it is reckless. Because if their master was there. Woo. I can't. Oh my God. Like, everybody hates him so much. I know. He's too pretty to get hit. You're not seriously going to do it, though, are you? Right? Reckless! Reckless as fuck! But still, it's reckless. People are going to talk bad about you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you just have to let it die.
Oh my god. to have the two people in the world who are most likely hated by everyone right now and they only have each other so of course they're going to be together they're going to be together they're gonna have a kid everything else one of them is gonna die like i'm so rejected right now oh my god Serious is so freaking tragic tragic. Like and it's only the first half. Only the first half. Right, Giggle? Damn. Think of something that'll make it fun. Oh my god. Very shame about him. Seriously? <laughs> but not after he did what he did in the first half of this episode, so you think he really deserves that. Well, I mean, you just as rotten as him, too. I mean, because you know, when people get really drunk, they say the truth. He does trust you, but... Oh! <sighs>
But at the same time, he was right. If you guys don't do anything about Rago, it'll die. Right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. I fell for him. She playing to deuce the fuck out. If there was nothing wrong, you wouldn't be here, right? Yes. Perfect. Duh. But hold on, that's what you wanted from the beginning! You know this isn't right. It was your dream. And he's always envied you too!
to do anything to make him stay. Like, damn. But don't go. In the way, baby, you're having a midlife crisis. That's what it really, truly seems like. Really, like, I mean, yes, to have your own master throw you out, expel you, and you you don't know. The one thing that you've been living for for the longest part of your life is at that in that moment gone for Shane. So, of course, it's like, well, what the fuck do I do now? And the only person that he could confide in was Neil. And, of course, like, it led to them having sex, of course. Because when you are lonely, you become needy, and you want to find the first person and just lay it out on him. Um, and then eventually you you do regret that. And sometimes it that loneliness and everything can turn even more depressing and stuff. Um... And you sometimes just need that fresh start. I, I truly understand wanting to have that fresh start and moving to the country with her. But it's not him. It's truly not him. Because if he really would have done that and really wanted to do it, then yeah, he would have been gung-ho. But she she's over here like, yeah, go with me. He's like, okay, I have nothing else to live for. Boy, if the roles were reversed, if it was a woman, I'd be like, stand up. Stand up, like, mm -mm, don't do that. Do not do that. Don't do that for him. No. You tell him no, and you get your ass up. Of course, yeah. He's going to die by the end of this episode. Which makes the most sense, because the wife did die in, the, in this episode, so it makes total, complete sense for him to also pass away in the next episode. But... Since we are almost done with this, we have a total of four more episodes before we're done with season one. Honestly, I really have no idea what the fuck could happen next. But I really do not want Shin to give up on this. I really would like to see Shin stay with Kiku and like at least continue on. But we know eventually Shin is going to die. He has to die in one of these last four episodes for the first half of season one before we get into season two or just predominantly the second half of the show. Um, Miu, of course, she's going to have their daughter, which is the girl who was in episode one, um, in the present day of it. But, mm, I just, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's just like, damn. I, and I get it because they are very both similar. So it made the most sense of, yes, let's have these two be together and no for Kiku. But it, they could have changed it. They could have said, fuck it, and had her be with Kiku, but... Because of the fact is, you know, and I will say this, this is, this is opposites and stuff and same sex and whatever. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to have a significant other who can have a one track mind or can multitask and try to balance both work and your love life. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my God. Sometimes it is a little hard, but once again, that communication is key. I'm just saying. Do not run off on somebody and instantly be like, well, I, I need to be needed by someone else. Like, if they won't do this, I'm going to go find someone else. No, 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 no. You you stay as best as you can. You make that as your work. And then if it still don't work, then that's when you have to leave. Then you leave. But for... Everything that happened in this episode, it, it just, it, we're, we, we had our highs and we are now plummeting to our lows of this. These are the, the, these last two episodes were very like depressing and what all has been happening, you know, a breakup and then a death and another breakup, but really more of a job breakup. So we can say technically termination fired, um, the good thing was a relationship blossomed out of it, but also a pregnancy as well. And it's just like, we're going to take this pregnancy as our quote unquote do over, start over, whatever. But who knows what, well, we know what the outcome is going to come from that. But 
it is what it is. That's all I'll say about that. Other than that, guys, that is my reaction to towards episodes 8 and 9 of Descending Stories. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos of what I eat with Matcha Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Wednesday for episodes 10 and 11. Well, yeah, 10 and 11 for you guys. And next Saturday for everybody else. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.